And thanks for joining us here for 17 News at 11 on this Wednesday. I'm Tammy Melchok. We'll have a reaction from the courtroom coming up in just a few moments. But we begin tonight with Bakersfield's homelessness crisis. This evening, city council members talked about the city's successes, failures, and ongoing challenges in dealing with the issue. 17's Robert Price has been following this long-running conversation, and he files this report. A few weeks ago, Bakersfield City Councilman Andre Gonzalez asked city staff to look at Bakersfield's existing homeless ordinances and compare them to a new anti-camping ordinance that went into effect this week in the city of Los Angeles, which has an estimated 41,000 unsheltered people. At Wednesday night's meeting, city staff, as well as others in the community tasked with managing the homeless issue, presented their findings, not just about the L.A. ordinance, but a complete report card of Bakersfield's progress. Much of the news was good. Just a few years ago, Bakersfield was trying to address local homelessness with a few hundred thousand dollars in federal pass-through funding. Now the city is spending from its own money, $11 million a year in general fund measure N dollars and seeing progress with rental assistance, a rapid rehousing program, and the addition of 400 new emergency shelter beds over the past three years. But where the city's homeless services, some of which are managed by Mercy House, have experienced failure, two recurring issues are turning up. This is Theo Dews of Mercy House. This is the one blemish on our operations thus far, is that we've had so many self-exits. I suspect, based on my decades of experience in this profession, that the number one reason we have so many self-exits is impulsive and irrational decisions that are made based on mental illness or chemical addiction. But as Homeless Collaborative Director Anna Levin said, the city has made incredible strides finding innovative, permanent housing solutions. Anthony Valdez, assistant to the city manager, said the city was looking at a possible fall expansion of the Brundage Lane Navigation Center, and the city may bring in some all-terrain vehicles to better police the riverbanks of the dry Kern River, where scores of people occupy illegal makeshift shelters. But does the city need additional ordinances based on strategies outlined in the new L.A. ordinance? Deputy City Attorney Joshua Rudnick said the staff's comparison to the two cities' approach suggests no. So when it comes down to it, when you look at the L.A. ordinance and look what we have on the books already, you know, the policies and provisions that we have and, 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 and what the L.A. ordinance has, it doesn't provide any new enforcement tools. The generally good news about Bakersfield's progress in addressing homelessness was tempered by Councilman Gonzalez's conclusion. I mean, it's very clear, um, you know, we are doing a lot. Um, but it's also clear uh, to folks throughout our community that the the problem still persists and that 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 there are issues in every single neighborhood throughout the city. Bakersfield clearly still has a way to go in housing its unsheltered population. In Bakersfield, Robert Price, 17 News. The Bakersfield City Council